Right, in this video we're going to be having a look at drain curves for JFETs specifically. But they are equally applicable, right, the same axes with the same way we read them for other types of field effect transistors. Right, and they're very similar to collector curves that you would have looked at for BJTs. Basically, drain curves show graphically the relationship between gate voltage, drain current, and the drain to source voltage. And virtually every JFET or MOSFET or FET uh, data sheet that you ever find are going to have some uh, a series if not more than one set of drain curves in them. So they are very useful in design and there's something that you should be familiar with. Now if I was to draw a typical set of drain curves for a JFET, it would look a little something like this where we have voltage from drain to source along the x-axis and the drain current on the y-axis. And just in case you've forgotten, I'll quickly draw us a n-channel FET, which is what we're looking at here. Uh, with our reverse bias gate to source and our forward bias uh, drain to source. So G, S, D, reverse bias, forward bias. VGS is measured between those two points there, the voltage if you were to take a multimeter and put the two probes between them, and VDS measured across the FET. So it's another way of saying what's the voltage drop across this FET, like you'd have a voltage drop across a resistor, and ID being the drain current going through the drain. Uh, because these devices have such a high input impedance uh, down here, uh, basically we say IED is equal to IS. So the current all the way through this device is approximately the same, right? The gate having a very, very high input impedance. So let's have a look at some drain curves. Now in a ideal sense, this is not how you, they typically look from a um, data sheet, but something similar. You'll notice for the first region of operation, which is known as the ohmic region, which is basically where this device acts as a voltage controlled resistor. Okay, so voltage controlled resistor. we see that we get this quite linear operating region, right? So where I'm drawing this line now, it's quite linear in its operation, the relationship between IED and VDS. Whereas once you start rolling off here, you'll see this relationship becomes non-linear. On this side, which I'm going to draw in here in red, so everything above this line here, this is what's known as the saturation region. And everything down here, below this line, is what's known as the pinch-off region. So let's examine what these blue lines are that I've drawn. The very top one corresponds to IDSS. So remember, current from drain to source saturated, the maximum amount of current that can flow through this device, is when VGS equals zero volts. And so each one of these blue lines is drawn with a different voltage gate to source, as you see here. All right, and different FETs will have different, obviously, series of um, drain curves with different values. But let's say these are typical values here. And what's important is a couple of points here. One is this voltage here, 
BDS with, is equal to VP. So when BDS is greater than VP, which is known as the pinch off voltage, current saturates through the device. So for the same BGS, even if BDS increases, in other words the voltage drop across this device increases, same current flows. So at this point in the, well, sorry not pinch off, but up here in the saturation region, we here now have a current source. And if we vary BGS, it becomes a voltage controlled current source. So voltage controlled current source. So by increasing VGS we can increase the current regardless of the voltage drop actually across this device. So we can have constant current irrespective of the voltage drop across it. However, saturation region normally for amplifiers, whereas the ohmic region, and we normally try and operate somewhere within this linear region, is where we want to be at uh, operating for switching. And the reason is we want to minimize, uh, because we want to minimize BDS. Okay, these devices are only as efficient uh, if you can minimize the power dissipated across it. And remember that the power dissipated across it will be equal to voltage times current, which is the drain current times the voltage drop across it. So if we want to switch lots of current, we want to do it with the minimum voltage drop and therefore the minimum power dissipated. So this thing doesn't get hot and it remains much more efficient. Alright, taking note again in this chart, of course we have negative voltages, reverse bias. Uh, so as we come down this graph, so it's increasing negative voltage. Or the magnitude is increasing of the negative voltage. Um, until we eventually get to the point where this device completely switches off, which then happens in the pinch off region. So completely off down here. ID equals zero within that pinch off region. Now you might ask how is this useful? So let's have a look at a clean set of drain curves, ID versus BDS, and we'll just roughly draw up some curves here. Now just like you had load lines in your uh, BJT circuits, we have load lines for FET circuits as well. Now up here we have, as we know, IDSS, the maximum current that can flow. But we also have this point here, which is the max current given uh, the resistance in our bias circuit. Alright, so if we had a FET with a series resistor in the drain, and There's our negative, uh, sorry, our reverse bias from gate to source. All right, then the maximum current that could flow through here, AD max, would be equal to VDD over this resistance here, RD, which is this point here. All right, so the max current, given the resistance, okay, if you have a resistance in the source, you'd have to take that into account as well. And this point here along the BDS is the maximum voltage drop you could have across your FET, which in this case would be BDD. So with those two points we can lock in a line between the two of them. Then as we modify our VGS value, you can see that we can move along this line. So as we go more positive up towards zero, we would move our low, our uh, quiescent point, or our Q point, from, let's say we started there, we could end up over here in the 
ohmic region uh, by simply increasing towards zero our uh, voltage from gate to source. And that's quite a convenient thing to be able to do, because we can then bias our device within a particular operating region by selecting an appropriate VGS. So drain curves give us the opportunity to plot our load line, which then allows us to find our Q point. Okay, so Q point would be given a drain current and a VDS. I can then find myself on here, or given some drain curves and the circuit, I can draw the load line and then given VGS find myself within that uh, set of drain curves. Now finally, the last thing I want to show you is what's happening up here. Now, I deliberately didn't draw this one like that, but again, normally you won't see drain curves and data sheets that have these little flicks coming up off them. But in reality, something like this does happen. And this is, can be called the fourth region, the breakdown region. Where basically, this device has now exceeded the maximum power dissipated across it, uh, maximum VDS or maximum power, it's overheated, and it's begun to break down. So no longer is it a current source with constant current, but instead uh, uncontrolled current flows through this device, breaking it down. So just remember, all devices have a practical operating region, which if you exceed, they will blow up. And uh, the FET or JFET is no exception to that rule.